15 years ago, um, I worked for another organization called a social worker called, in a regional center, and I had just become an executive director. I knew nothing about nonprofit whatsoever. The first grant I wrote was to an organization called Hispanics and Philanthropy. And some of you know this story, uh, my hand to God, I, it was a capacity building grant and I didn't know what capacity building was. I actually had to Google it because I'm thinking, what do they want? Can I, can I pay staff? Can I, yeah, I didn't know what it was. Um, needless to say, I got it. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And the re some of the reason for that was Fernando was hired by Hispanic, Hispanics and Philanthropy to be the consultant for all of us. And I had a year with him teaching me about strategic planning and fund development and one-on-one -on -one donorships and all the things that have happened. And we became friends and colleagues through all these years. And I said, one day, Fernando, I want you to meet this new group that I'm working with. And, you know, COVID is bad, but in a way, we've gotten Fernando all the way from Philadelphia to be with us in this room today. And that is a gift. Um, he is an extraordinary teacher and I know he doesn't want me to go on about him, but I, I wanna turn it over to him and enjoy every moment that Fernando has with us. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Susie. It's so great to see you. Congratulations, all of you um, for sticking it out. It's been a wonderful two days. Um, my challenge or my goal is to try to bring it all together. Um, and let me share with you my screen. I've attended the conference. And uh, if you have short-term short memory like me, um, I'm going to remind you that yesterday, some of the great sessions we had dealt with, for example, movements, not moments, leaders of color, um, social equity, uh, racial equity, equity. Today, we heard from Jan. Uh, who talked about the meaning of life, and she used the word advocacy and social change. Um, advocacy, digital inclusion, some of the workshops that we just finished, we heard about storytelling, and we heard about building strategic partners and working together. So what I thought we would do is, let's try to put it together, but let's talk a little bit about our boards. Um, and I'm going to talk about what makes a nonprofit tick, and a key part is the boards. You can't live with them, and you can't live without them. And some of you by day are executive directors of nonprofits, and maybe by night you serve on a board. Um, and the second thing we're gonna do, maybe in about 15 minutes, I'm gonna try to get shared understanding among all of us as to what we mean by these words that we've been hearing these last uh, two days. What is diversity to you? What is equity? What is inclusion? social and racial justice, advocacy, systems change advocacy. And then around 11.30, we're going to talk about why might it be important for all this to, to happen. So let me begin by uh, reminding us that in the United States, we have three branches of government, three, three sectors, not to be taken for granted because in some countries, I'm doing some research on China, we really don't have this nonprofit sector. But what makes the, the United States tick uh, is we've got the, the for-profit sector, airlines, which are not working too much these days, Starbucks, uh, Walmart, et cetera, the for-profit sector. And then we have the public sector, the three branches of government, federal, state, city, county, Department of Health, Department of Education, Department of Transportation. And then this is the sector that we're all in, the nonprofit sector. And this sector does stuff that this sector cannot do, and, and the nonprofit sector does stuff that the public sector cannot do. There are a number of you here sitting in this room dealing with kids. So after kids end up, and after the bell rings at 3 p.m., the nonprofit sector, like the Boys and Girls Club, takes up the slack. The kid isn't gonna be helped by Walmart, the child can't stay in school after three, so maybe we take our child to the Boys and Girls Club or other youth development organizations. So what I'd like you to reflect for the, five, for the next uh, six minutes is I'm gonna break you up into groups and um, I'm gonna send you a Google Doc. I'm gonna send you this link right now. I'm gonna put it in, in, chat, in the chat function. And I'd like you to, um, when we break out into groups, I'd like you to 
just say the following things. What is my name? What's the organization I'm on? Am I on the board or am I on the staff? And is my organization, is my board at the beginning, intermediate, are we pretty much fair? Are we really super advanced? Again, let me share with you what I'd like you to do. We're going to break up into rooms. Go to this link, go to this doc that I'm going to send to you all. And just put, if you think that your board is at the beginning stage, just put a one. If you think it's at the beginning, intermediate, put a one. And we'll see how many people code their, their organizations as a beginning, middle, intermediate, and so forth. So here's the, um, here's the link. It's coming up in a second. So uh, let's see. If you could all mute yourself for a minute, for those of you who came back, uh, who came in a little bit late, thank you for joining us. Um, it's been a great two days. I mentioned that uh, the last two days you've talked about things like movements, not moments, social equity, racial equity, advocacy, inclusion, and for the next 40 minutes that we have left, I'm gonna try to bring it all together. And so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we've talked about your boards and hopefully you had a little bit of time to talk about where your boards are in their phase of development and i mentioned that we have three sectors in the, in our country the for-profit sector the non-profit sector the public sector and in the times that you were together all about 50 of you i asked you to rate your boards are you at a beginning stage are you a teenager intermediate stage are you proficient or are you like really great and are you a star board? And, um, and that's just to get us going. So the next thing I wanna talk about is that, um, is to come up with a shared understanding of these words that we've heard throughout uh, the, the last two days. So here are some words that we've seen, that we've heard, diversity, equity, inclusion, D-E-I. Um, racial justice, black and indigenous people of color, systems change advocacy. But before we go there, let me just take a minute or two to hear from anybody of any reflections you have as to where the groups are in their phase of development. Anybody wanna jump in and just chat what surprised you about the breakout room that you were in? Anybody just unmute yourselves and, and share. Susie, I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Given, <laughs> yeah, given, uh, yeah. So you've got a great organization. Yeah. Um, what happens in Zoom stays in Zoom. All right. Good. <laughs> it's just you and me. It's just you and me. That's right. Where do you? Where do you? Where would you put your board? Yeah. So I think to be. I'm just. Be, we're small, right? Because we barely got our 501c3 officially, like less than three years ago. And I think that we're in the intermediate kind of stage. Um, we've had to be, of course, adaptable during this time. Instead of meeting monthly, we're meeting weekly because we know things are moving so quickly that you have to be that kind of um, attentive to things, but also things are falling through because of this nature of being you know, pulled in different directions. So that's kind of where we see ourselves and having to um, kind of fortify our communication systems amongst each other during this time. You got it. So in this room, there's about 57 of us. Uh, there's a whole range of people. Uh, and the way that you've coded yourselves, that you're, some of your boards are at the beginning stage, baby stage. Some of your boards are what we would call the teenage stage. Um, and some boards are pretty proficient. And congratulations, some boards are like star. So, and that this is a process. So for the next 30 minutes, I just want you to remember this. And now what I'd like you to do is come up with a shared definition of some of the words that we've been hearing. And I'm gonna break you up again. If you land in groups one and two, could you just talk to each other for five minutes and come up with what you think diversity means? If you land in breakout room number three, could you just go around the room and, say, and, and come up with a definition of inclusion? If you land in group number four, 
could you just talk? What do you think uh, what inclusion means? If you come up, if you land in breakout room five, what is your shared definition of so social and racial justice? And if you land in groups six and seven, come up with a dish, definition of systems change advocacy. This is what Jan was talking about in part today and what we heard yesterday, movements, not people. After you talk for about five minutes, could one person in each room, just one person, volunteer to come up with a definition that resonates with all of you? Just type something here, just one person. Questions? We're good. All right, so here's a different, break, different breakout rooms. Uh, hopefully you'll land with different people. And so I'm gonna recreate the rooms and um, I'm gonna make eight rooms and here, uh, seven rooms rather. And here you go, see you in about seven minutes. Welcome back, everyone. So we've got about 25 minutes. We're doing really great for time. Um, so number one, what have we done? We've thought about the three sectors of our society, and we are all in the nonprofit sector, number one. Number two, we have um, reflected on where our boards are, and I'll tell you why I'm focusing on the board right now, because the boards are a crucial part of the nonprofit sector. The four, some for-profits do have boards, the majority don't have boards, and the government doesn't have a board. So we, the nonprofit sector, are the only one that has a board. Secondly, the last two days we've been hearing words like diversity, inclusion, equality, advocacy. And so we, so for the last uh, six, seven minutes, I asked you to come up with a shared definition in your group of six, seven, or eight people of what, what those words mean to you. And after this meeting is over, we're gonna send this to you as a, as a foundation for you to continue to reflect on what we've done this morning. So let me share with you what you came up with and I'm gonna ask uh, for in a minute or less, could group number one, could the scribes in uh, group one and two uh, share with us your definition? Unmute yourself and take it away. Group one, group one could you tell us uh, just read for us what you came up with. Uh, yes, so we, our definition is a system that includes all people recognizing and celebrating our individual differences across, oh, thank you for making that bigger, <laughs> um, across race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, age, geography, language, disability, and beyond. Great, so that's uh, six or seven people's definition of diversity. Group number two also, uh, well, group number two cheated. Uh, and they said, we agree with the above, and we're going to add religion to the list. Thank we you. We don't think that, we, it's, it's not so much that we cheated, Fernando, it's just that the first group did such a phenomenal job. Um, we, we, we discussed about religion being added to that list. We agree with theirs. We also talked about the importance of understanding our commonality as one large group, but not at the price of suppression or exclusion. So when we say we're all one race or the human race and all lives matter and things like that, sometimes that's done by groups or organizations that aim to suppress and to homogenize. And we didn't, we didn't think that that uh, adds to the discussion of diversity uh, and inclusion. Thank you. And you, what you just said, the language of suppression, that's, that's beautiful. Could you, as, as other people are um, reporting out, would you mind what, uh, typing in what you just said so that this sure. can live on for posterity. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. So uh, breakout group number three, what was your shared definition of equity? Fair and equal, uh, doing what's needed to, for each group to get them to the point, to the same point. So it's not equal distribution, but distribution based on what is needed to get a level playing field so that everyone can move forward. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so we've used the word inclusion several times during the last two days. 
and group number four, what did you come up with um, as to your shared definition of inclusion? Uh, so we wrote to be able to have your voice heard, a mutual understanding and respect and bringing people together with a common understanding. Great. And I know that we, we've only had six or seven minutes to do this, but uh, breakout group number five, could you uh, share and later you can type in the, uh, your discussion on your definitions of social and racial justice? Hmm. Let's go. Let's move on to group six. Well, we we can speak oh. to it. Okay, I, go ahead. I think um, I think we didn't know where to write it in, but um, we talked about everybody um, trying to get everybody on the same playing field. Everybody being treated equally, and even though that that's not um, the case, um, one of our um, participants said we all have the same heartbeat. Um, and then I added, we all ble bleed the same blood um, and trying to, get, trying to get to that, that place, even though we're not there, trying to get to that place. <clears throat> Thank you. And what you just said, would you mind typing it in so that again, we can sure. learn from what you said. Mm -hmm. And let's hear um, group number six first and then group number seven. What did you come up as your definitions of systems change advocacy? And advocacy is a word that we heard in the keynote this morning. Group number six. I'll let Sherry, she was in our group and she was very eloquent. Sherry, if you're on, unmute yourself. Maybe she doesn't want to. Okay. I'll do it, I'll do it. I was, it it. I was just saying Sherry was the one that was really- Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Go ahead. If you could go ahead, because I can't see the paper oh, and the, oh, she the can't screen see the paper. The okay, time. so I can Sorry. do it. So the, the conversation amongst our group was that um, it was important to get to the root of whatever the issues were, um, and that the power was in the rules of the system. Because it is. You can't hear me? Or, anyway. We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and the, also, it was important on systems work is that there has to be a shift in the paradigm of power, right? On where it sits, it takes longer to do systems kind of work than any other kind of work. And that's a shared understanding amongst the group. It's not an easy process. And um, also uh, Quentin shared about, it was important also to have the right people in the, in the form of leadership in order for to get the work done and support the change. Excellent. And that's why um, the right people in leadership and that's what I wanted to, to reflect on is your boards. So we'll, talk more about that in the next few minutes. And group number seven, do you want to sh uh, share with us the, uh, your conversation? Go ahead. All right. Hi, group number seven. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Um, sorry. So um, it's right here. Our, our Pat really got, you know, she, she just nailed it down. It was, um, and we, we all agreed it's to be the voice of the oppressed and marginalized mm -hmm. is kind of the, the definition we gave the advocacy. Okay, thank you. All right, <laughs> we've got about 20 minutes left. Susie's really like driving me hard here. Um, so what have we done? Three sectors of society. We're in the nonprofit sector. The leaders of the nonprofit sector are the board. Um, some of us have great boards. Some of us, the boards are moving along. And so after this conference ends, I'd like you to reflect. We have been challenged for the last six months on the pandemic, economic downturn, and social and racial protests. And my question to you is now, how are we bringing all this together? How is the board and the staff dealing with these challenges? And in California, you have one more challenge, climate change and the fires. So the pandemic, climate change, the economy, racial and social movements. And that was the keynote speak uh, talk for day one. 
movements, not moments. So let me share with you, uh, for the, before we break out again, let me share with you um, what I see that makes a nonprofit tick. And that'll set the foundation for the last time that we're going to break out. So I, I want you to reflect that cars have key parts, the motor, the wheels, our bodies have parts, ear, nose, and throat. A house has parts, floor, walls, and roof. And the analogy I'm going to make for the next two minutes is that the nonprofits that we work in or whose boards we serve on also have key parts. So just like a house has floor, walls, and roof, a nonprofit has key parts, and here they are. And so these are the four key parts. The foundation of a nonprofit is the programs. Once upon a time, somebody said, hey, nonprofits here in, in our <laughs> neck of the woods, it would be great if they work together. So let's set up this thing called IECC. Another important part of a house is a wall, and another important part of a nonprofit is the people who work there. Another important part of a house is another wall, and another important part of our nonprofits are our boards. And finally, if you have an okay floor and okay walls, then you can have money. And under operations, I cluster money. That's your fundraising systems. Telling the story, your websites, your brochures, allocating the money, dealing with technology, and dealing with facilities. Dealing with technology, by the way, I'm trying to replicate as much as possible how we, how we would break out in tables in a, in, in a person-to-person -person meeting, but doing the best I can in breakout rooms. So the people who work in our nonprofits are paid staff. That's most of you in this room and our volunteers. And the board is, again, the people who come to meetings once a month. And our pro if we had more time, I'd go into this. Our programs are good if they adapt to what our clients need. And our programs would even be better if not just if they adapt, but if they disrupt. That's what we're getting at into systems change advocacy as groups um, six and seven talked about. So again, a house has floor, walls, and roof. And our nonprofits are made up of programs, people who work there for pay or for free, our board of directors, are they the right people on our board? And our operations. And our, and our operations, I tuck in systems to bring in the money, allocating the money and telling the story. And there was a workshop uh, on fundraising. And here uh, are the chimneys that bring in the money. So some of you sitting in this room, you might get money from the feds, the state, the county government, or the city, and you might get grants from a foundation, a corporation, individual human beings, you charge a fee for a service, or you have the annual special event, which none of us is having because we can't sit around and eat rubber chicken. And so there you have it. When you put all of these things together, do your boards serve the community? Do your programs represent and serve the community? On your staff, do you have people from the community? And in your marketing, do you show people that you serve? So those are for what I call your four core competencies, your programs, your board, your staff, and your operations. And now for the last time that we're going to break out in the last 10 minutes, here's what makes your nonprofits tick, your programs, your board, your human resources, and your operations. But I just want to focus on marketing right now. And here's what I'd like you to do. In your small groups, let's, do, let's replicate the groups again, groups one and two, groups three, breakout room four, and breakout room five and six. I'm going to break up into six groups. Could you talk to each other as to why, not how, but why it's important in our boards to think about diversity, equity, inclusion? Breakout room number three, could you talk about why when you hire staff and volunteers, 
it's important to have diversity, equity, inclusion in your mind. Breakout room number four. Could you explore why it's important to think about diversity, equity, inclusion in the way we handle our programs? And finally, groups number five and six, when we set up a website, when we have brochures, could you talk about why it's important to have in the forefront issues of diversity, equity, inclusion, social and racial justice, who, who are on the photographs of our websites? So I'm gonna recreate the, the rooms. I'm going to make up six rooms and you know what you're gonna do and we're gonna come back in six minutes. Here you go. Welcome back everybody. In the four minutes or so that we have left, um, want to just go out, go around and report out on why, what your group said is why it's important to embed issues of social justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion in each component part of our organizations. Group one, could you read out, uh, and then group two, why you think at the governance level it's important to have this frame? Take it away, group number one. Hi. Hey. Um, the things that we wrote down, it reflects uh, the beneficiaries that we are um, supporting, but also um, the funders and their interests. It, it is important because a diverse board brings different perspective to our work, whether it's about socioeconomic elements or cultural aspects. It also attracts a diverse audience and networks uh, on you know, various stakeholders. Thank you. Group number two. Um, for us, we talked about the fact that the governing body needs to represent the group that is being served because the people who have the decision-making power need to have the experience and understanding. Um, that it wasn't enough to just get feedback from stakeholders. You really needed those people in the room with the power to make decisions. It also talks Excellent. about the fact that the board um, needs to live in the community served in, in, and that embedding that community culture was important and that the framework of systems change and justice starts at the board level. So they need to have that embedded in kind of their culture as a board in order for it to move through the organization. Excellent, thank you. Um, group number three, why is it important to think about DEI at the staff level? Take it away. So I'll, I'll go ahead and report out. This is Doug Perkins. Um, I, I shared, uh, and collectively those who shared, um, it's important to have diversity of staff uh, to effectively, and I'm going to add a word in here, and efficiently serve these, the mixed communities that we, we live in. So it, I guess the, the two focus words would be effectively and efficiently serve the communities, um, the mixed communities that we live in, so. Got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, what is, okay, uh, group number four, did, I know you didn't have a chance to write, but is there anything you wanna add? Yes, we do. We Take want, it away. Okay, in terms of the program, we felt that it was really, and that it is really important to know who we are serving and that, and also in the manners in which we serve our clients and our stakeholders. We wanted to, we think it's important for the program to be effective and to be efficient that we actually uh, are meeting the needs of the stakeholders that we're assisting and we use the data that identifies it. Um, we felt strongly that we need to know who we're, who we're serving, how we are serving, are we actually meeting their needs and are we actually meeting their needs in a, um, powerful and meaningful way and that in all of our efforts we have to be very strategic and intentional in executing our programs thank you and so that we can remember and learn from you would you mind um typing that in when you get a chance yes. so that we can send it out to folks and lastly and we're we're about uh running out of time but group five and six could you say why in the marketing part of your organization it's important to have 
a framework of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Take it, a, uh, take it away, Group 5. So um, in our work, we discussed that it's important so that the clients and the donors um, feel that they're welcomed for our services. Um, and then it just reflects, you know, the communities that we're serving. Um, and then it lets the community know where the organization stands related to social issues. It also allows disenfranchised people to know that they're empowered and they have allies for them. Thank you. And group number six, uh, you want to share with us what you came up with? Uh, yes, and so we were still mid-conversation when we got cut off. So these are the, the beginning thoughts we had, um, and we were talking a lot about how as organizations um, and professionals in the nonprofit world, we are thought leaders and we have, we're community leaders. And so we have the power and the position to lift up representation and accessibility and make those things at the forefront. And that's one of the reasons why it's important to champion that. Um, and also to make sure that the people that we serve in our community see themselves in our messaging and know that the service is for them and that uh, their experiences are real and valid and important. Super. So I, um, I want to congratulate you all. I wish I could be with you in person. I've learned so much from you all and we've all learned from each other. I have structured and facilitated this workshop for 55 minutes, not as me as an expert, but you all as experts. And this sheet will put up on the IECC website later so that you can continue. So again, to, to review and to summarize, uh, we have three sectors of society and we're all in the nonprofit sector. The nonprofit sector has a board, it has staff, it has programs, and it has operations. In the last 50 minutes or so, we have talked about what's been challenging us for the last half year. The pandemic, the social and racial protests, the climate change, and the need to advocate to change the system. I'm leaving you, you're leaving each other, with why it's important to think about these things, which has been at the root of these two days. When you go back to your offices and when you meet with your board and when you meet with your staff, you can take this thumbnail sketch that we did and maybe you can start talking about how we're gonna do it. If it's important for our boards to represent the communities that we serve, how the heck are you gonna do that? If it's important for our staff to represent the communities that we serve, how are you gonna do that? Where are you going to advertise for job openings? If it's important for our marketing to represent, to think for our marketing to in, embed issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion, how are you gonna do that in your website, in your trifold brochures, in your English language brochures, in your Spanish language brochures, Chinese or Korean? We did not have time to talk about how, but we started down the path of why. And so maybe next time we meet, or next time Susie brings you together, or your next time that you uh, convene, the how could be something to think about. So again, Susie, thank you so much for inviting me. It's been so wonderful to see you all again. And maybe in 2021, I'll be able to see you all in person. Yes, thank you, thank you Fernando, gracias, thank you. So thank you. really grateful. Um, and our hope is, is that Fernando does come back. We've had some brief conversations about that. And in a way, because it is virtual right now, that makes it possible for him to join us. So we're looking forward to schedule some uh, other um, learning opportunities with Fernando and, um, and, and I hope you can all join us. So again, on behalf of all of us here in Southern California, we are grateful for the time you've spent with us this morning and um, you know, providing us some direction. And actually the way we wanted to think about this conference was you sometimes attend a lot of events and our hope is, is that you get so much information, but if you can walk away with one or two things that you can do next, right? That's the most important thing for all of us as we do this work is um, you putting into practice. So thank you, Fernando, for framing that for us so eloquently here at the end of the conference. And I